I'm filming this on a brand new phone. I'm hoping that the video quality is just as good. I haven't really tested it, so fingers crossed. Hi, welcome to my channel. My name is Sarah and I love to talk about books. This week it's time to talk about my February TBR because pat on the back people, we made it through January, literally the worst month of any year. Here in Scotland we have been in lockdown throughout January and as I film this I'm not sure what the plans are going forward. So I hope for anyone else who's in a similar boat, whatever country you're in, that you're holding up okay. We've done this before, we can do it again guys. And of course we've always got books to get us through, so what will I be reading in February? I've got eight books on my February TBR, a few of them are from NetGalley because I'm still trying to clear my backlog from there and then I've got some backlist titles as well. The first one I'll talk about is one of my net galleys and it's The Water Dancer by ta Coates and this is about the underground war on slavery in the southern USA. Main character Hiram escapes from his life as a slave and joins the underground fight. He still pines for the adoptive family he's left behind and it also turns out that he has some magical mysterious powers. So this sounds like it mixes a touch of magic with historical fiction, which is a blend that I have really liked in the past. I'm thinking of uh, recently The Murmur of Bees by Sophia Segovia, and I've heard um, a lot about Tanahasi Coates. I've never read any of his work, but I'm excited to get started with it. And sticking with NetGalley, my next read is Loved and Wanted, a memoir of choice, children and motherhood by Krista Paravani. So this is a memoir of the experience of health and reproductive care in the US, or rather the failings of it. After her second child was born, Krista found herself pregnant with a third, just as she was about to start a job which would give her family the security and stability that it really, really needed. So she decided on abortion, but um, the health professionals and the setup of healthcare where she lived in West Virginia effectively blocked her from being able to exercise this choice. And then when her son was born, she found that the healthcare provision was um, suitably inadequate to care for his needs. And although I suppose that does sound quite a bleak um, topic for a memoir, but I'm really interested in that. I've worked for the NHS for most of my um, working life and it's something I'm really proud of, the setup that we have here in the UK. And for those of you who aren't from the UK, the National Health Service here is free at the point of delivery for anyone who needs it. We pay for it through taxes. And um, although in England it's slightly different, here in Scotland we don't pay even for prescriptions. Um, dental health checkups are free, eye checkups are free, and any care that you would receive in the hospital whether it be emergency or scheduled or going to see your GP, it's all free at the point of delivery. No one gets that itemised bill that I think you get in um, places like the US. And for me, it's it's just a point of pride that my country has that universal health care and it's equal to all. I've never got my head around the US system with all the insurances and co-pay and all these other terms that get thrown about, so it, I think this is going to be a really educational experience reading this memoir. And then my next book is a physical one, and it is oh, um, Split, a memoir of divorce by Suzanne Finnamore. This is actually um, an ARC copy, <laughs> um, not one that I was given, I bought this second hand, um, but this is pretty much what it says on the tin, it is a memoir of um, Suzanne Finnamore's divorce experience. Um, this is going to be a timely read for me, seeing as mine is progressing now after a long period of stalemate, and it is apparently full of pragmatic advice, insight and black humour which um, I very much need. And then again, back to NetGalley, um, I'm going to be reading When the Music Stops by Joe Heap. This is the story of Joe and Ella, and the story spans from Glasgow during World War II to London, um, full of sex, drugs and rock and roll in the 60s. And it tells um, the story of how their lives 
become intertwined through seven key moments and seven key people. So that sounds really intriguing. I love interwoven stories and I am a sucker for an interesting structure as well. Plus, <laughs> Glasgow, we all know how Sarah feels about books set in Scotland. And then on my Kindle, I am finally getting round to Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ng. This has, I actually thought this was on my TBR for last year. And then as the year was going on, I hadn't read it. And I realised that I hadn't actually included it in my TBR for last year. Um, but I really, I want to read it anyway, because I read everything I never told you back in 2019, that would have been. I really enjoyed that. The premise of this book sounds great. And then there's also the Amazon Prime adaptation with Reese Witherspoon, who I absolutely adore. And I really want to get to that as well. So I'm really excited. I feel like most people will know about this book, but if you don't, this is about two women. So there's Eleanor, who kind of embodies the placid, bland suburb where this all takes place. And then in comes Mia, who is a single mom, an artist, and she rents a house from Eleanor. Meanwhile, um, Eleanor's friends, who I assume are white, are trying to adopt a Chinese-American baby and Mia and Eleanor find themselves on opposing sides of the custody battle that ensues. I'm not sure why, but Eleanor seems to be determined to uncover the secrets and motives of Mia, who is a woman that her own kids seem to be utterly entranced by, but the results of this are devastating. So I think this is probably going to have um, more action and meat to it than everything I never told you. But I did really like her writing style, so I know this is going to be a good read. And then back to Net Kelly again for How Beautiful We Are. We Were. How Beautiful We Were by Mbolo Mbui. I hope I've said that right. This is set in a fictional African village where people live in fear and ill health under the shadow of an American oil company. It's told through the eyes of a generation of children and I think the villagers do rise up and fight back against this oil company and um, the powers of their own country as well. I think that sounds really intriguing. I've really enjoyed pretty much every book that I've read that's been set in Africa it's a continent that I think has such rich history and issues to explore, particularly in fiction. Um, but I have read non-fiction as well and enjoyed that equally. Um, so I'm really looking forward to getting to that one. And then I have another physical book and this is Chernobyl Strawberries by Vesna Goldsworthy. You will have seen me mention this in my 21 books I want to get to in 21, I think it was, video. Um, and you'll have me explain one why this book has a massive sticker on the front of it and the fact that it has been on my shelf since 2005 so it's time to get this one read this one really confuses me because i think i probably picked it up due to the title but in no premise that i've read either on this copy itself or on goodreads or on the internet mentions the Chernobyl disaster. So I don't know what the link is there, but I do know that she was prompted to write this after a cancer diagnosis. And obviously there are a lot of um, links to cancer for those who were exposed from the Chernobyl disaster. So I'm really interested to see what this is all about. I know that Vesna is a poet. I'm not a poetry person. So I'm wondering how I'll get on with the writing in this. But that just sounds like my kind of adventure. And then finally, I'm going to Audible for my last read, and it will be The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett. This is about runaway twins, one who decides to live her life as a black woman, and one who decides to live her life passing as white. She gets married to a white man, and her husband has no idea of her past, racial or otherwise. So this is about the sisters, but also about their daughters and the impact that their decisions and the secrets in their past will have on them and the next generation as those daughters' lives intersect. I know that this is based on um, Passing by Nella Larson, which I haven't read yet. I'm wondering if I should have read that first um, because I do plan to get to it at some point. I don't have a copy 
um, but I think either way around um, they definitely sound like an interesting pair of books. Obviously it's not um, a lived experience that I have myself and I really enjoy reading books that are set around um, those diverse lived experiences so I'm really looking forward to this one. I'm also hoping that this will be my first ever buddy read. I'm still making plans for that but I am equal parts nervous and excited to finally pop my buddy reading cherry. <laughs> So those are the eight books that I'm hoping to get to in February. My reading year has been off to a great start and I'm hoping that continues because obviously everything's still so up in the air with lockdowns and vaccine rollouts and I'm still working from home. I haven't set foot in an office for nearly a year and so books are like my little blanket fort of safety. They got me through 2020, they get me through 2021 and I'm just really thankful that I decided to start this channel and be able to share that as well. And so I hope anyone out there who is struggling with things at the moment is able to find the same solace in books that I am. Have you read any of these books or um, do you have any opinions more to the point on any of these books? Please share them in the um, comments below because you know I love to chat books. And also what books are, you know, getting you through this time. If there's any specific titles, I would love to hear those as well. And so until next time, 